Hey guys, there is a mysterious ancient structure in Gujarat. What is it? Archaeologists and historians tell us a standard story. This is called Rani Ki Vav. It is a step wall built for the locals so the locals can get down these steps and draw water from this wall. But you are about to learn that this is not a step wall, but it was built for a completely different reason. What you're looking at is one of its kind. It's an inverted negative temple. Some fancy words, you may think. A typical Hindu temple starts with the ground level, has some steps going up to increase its height or altitude gradually. Finally, at the tower area, starts with a large base and then ends up having a pointy end at the top, right? Now, Rani Ki Val is designed exactly the opposite way. It starts with the ground level, slowly starts to decrease its altitude. You gradually go down, and at this area, it starts with a larger top, but ends up having a pointy end at the very bottom. Maybe I can do better. So here, we're making a model of Rani Ki Vav. Imagine this foam is the piece of land, and I'm starting to carve the steps here, and then there is a flat area here, and then I carve more steps, then a flat area, and so on. And at the far end, I've started to make a deep, so-called quote-unquote well, which gradually reduces in its radius towards the bottom. If you look at this model now, it looks very much like Rani Ki Vav, right? But in order to see the negative temple, we have to fill up the empty space and see what happens. So I've taken some plaster of Paris and I'm going to fill up the empty space. I'm filling up everything and kind of uh, leveling up the ground level. The plaster of Paris is now slowly solidifying inside the empty space. In a few minutes, it completely solidifies. Now, remember, I told you it's an inverted negative temple, so I have to invert this model. Now, let me cut off the foam and see how the solidified empty space looks. The foam represents the positive material, and I'm slowly, slowly removing the positive material. As I'm doing it, you can start to understand that it looks very much like a Hindu temple. Let me clean up the foam sticking on it, and you can see for yourself. This is not just looking similar to an ancient temple, it's looking identical to a typical ancient temple. I have just proved my theory that Rani Ki Val is not a step wall, but an inverted negative temple. If you go to most ancient temples, you will see steps rising in altitude. Then there will be a small shrine called Mandaba, and then there will be more steps leading to more mandabas. And at the far end, you will see a giant tower with a pointy top. And this is exactly what we see here. If we exclude the minor details and look at the macro model, there is no doubt that it was built as a negative inverted temple. And no other temple has ever been built like this not only in India, but in the whole world. So what we are looking at is actually a wonder of the world. No one has understood that this is such a temple in the last few centuries. I think I am the first one to fully understand this. Now, how did I realize that it was a negative temple? I visit hundreds of ancient sites and the energy and vibration in every place is usually very positive and peaceful. However, 
our entire team became very negative as we entered the site. They felt anger and sorrow. They blamed it on the weather and other things. But I could feel the negativity get more and more intense as I went deeper and deeper into the structure. This is exactly the opposite of what happens when you visit a positive temple. Typically, in a Hindu temple, as you walk towards the main chamber, your positivity increases and you reach a calm, joyful state when you're in the main chamber. Of course, you can easily dismiss this as pseudoscience, but we have all had at least one instance where we met a negative person, but we did not trust our instinct and paid for it. But if it has such a negative vibe, what happened to the builders who built it? This is the crazy part. After creating such a negative structure, the builders seem to have understood its energy. They completely abandoned this place and moved out of this area. All the locals were also forbidden from visiting this place. Nobody entered this location for many, many centuries until 1890 when two British archaeologists accidentally, quote unquote, discovered the structure. They have recorded that initially nothing was visible except a small pit and a few pillars. The whole place was completely, I mean completely covered with dirt. In fact, the two archaeologists expected to find a very small structure when they started excavating it. But when they started to understand about the actual size of this place, they gave up the excavation project. There have been at least five different attempts to excavate and restore this structure since then, and every attempt has been stopped halfway because they keep finding more and more elaborate structures. The last excavation and restoration attempt was done between 1981 and 1987. Did they succeed in finishing the job? No. They could only finish the job up to this part. And beyond this line, no one is permitted because the excavation and renovation is not complete. And experts are embarrassed to admit that it may never be completed. Why? Because as they excavate more and more, they keep finding more and more stuff. Some say this structure actually stretches underground for acres. Some say the so-called well, it keeps on getting deeper and deeper, just like the mystery of the structure. This place is so mysterious that archaeologists sheepishly admit that no one actually knows the original name of the structure. Today, it's simply called Tronic Evolve, meaning the Queen's Stepwell. Did a queen actually build such a structure? And did she just name it simply as a Queen's Stepwell? After quote-unquote discovering the structure, archaeologists and historians searched for some evidence about the builder as they could not find anything on the site. And they found an obscure 14th century text that talks about a step well built by a queen. So they've conveniently pinned it on her. Experts admit that this is only a guess as they have not found one single inscription about this queen in all of this giant structure. Think about the human mind for a second when people donate a single stone block to a temple. They write their names all over it. When some generous influencer buys food to the homeless, they take a picture of that and post it everywhere. Who built the world's only inverted negative temple? And why did they not write their name on the walls? even once. However, experts have tried their best to keep this place mystery-free 
And they've even claimed that a statue found here shows the queen who built it, and she built it in memory of her husband. However, the statue looks like any other female statue in the temple. And why didn't the royal courtiers write anything about such a wonderful structure? If she did construct it in memory of her husband, why isn't the husband carved all over the structure? In fact, he's not even carved once because we can identify all the statues here. Nearly all of them are Hindu gods. But whoever built it was very special. It needs a superhuman thinking to merge both positive and negative construction techniques. Wait, positive and negative construction techniques? What is that, right? You see, ancient Indians used two major types of construction techniques. The first construction technique follows addition of materials. This is how we build everything today. We start from the ground and start adding blocks from the bottom to the top. This is the positive construction technique. But ancient builders of India also used a negative construction technique. They created structures by removing materials. They did not add a single piece of stone, wood, or metal to these temples. These temples were created by scooping out tons and tons of rocks from hills. The builders started from the top of the hill and removed the material from top to bottom. This is the negative construction technique. But the unique aspect of this structure is that it has employed both positive and negative construction techniques. First, the ancient builders had to remove everything. They had to clear the trees and then had to dig a giant crater into the ground, removing tons and tons of dirt. How much dirt are we talking about? This structure is approximately 200 feet long, 65 feet wide, and 100 feet deep. I calculated the approximate volume of this. So first, they had to remove 65,000 tons. Yes, 65,000 tons of dirt from top to bottom. This was the negative part of the construction. This is by no means an easy job even today. Even if you use modern earth-moving machines, it can still take a very long time. But this is actually the easy part of the construction. After this, they had to start from the bottommost level and start adding stone blocks. This is the positive construction technique. But at this depth of 100 feet, water seeps into the soil and makes the soil wet. So they had to put in a very strong foundation. How many stone blocks were used for this construction? Too many to count. How many floors do you think this structure has? Seven floors. Yes, it has a total of seven levels, just like most Hindu temples. Every level is filled with pillars, beams, not to mention beautiful statues. So imagine the amount of time and effort needed to create such a brilliant structure. What is Raniki Valve's real name? Why was such a structure built? Why did the builders want to create a negative structure? Did something happen to the builders while constructing a massive negative structure? Is this why they abandoned the site? Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I am Praveen Mohan. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.